Hey everyone, Tony Manito here. Just a little quick tutorial on staining glazing 3D printed materials, specifically for the anterior. So when these come out of the printer, there's always a little bit of texture to them. And so I just use a composite polisher to remove some of this texture. The importance of this is when you add stain to these, uh, if you've got that texture, it's gonna flow into those little texture lines uh, and go in places where you really don't want it to go. So just a quick, maybe 10 or 15 seconds with your composite polisher will do wonders to get rid of that little bit of texture um, and give you a nice smooth surface to work with. You can really appreciate that in this shot right here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through and in this tutorial, really just be working on these two um, centrals uh, that I'm showing you here. This is a little thing that I print just to do a little practice for staining and glazing and to teach my team how to do the same. And you can absolutely air braid after this step if you want uh, to maybe help your stains stick a little bit better. I have not found that to be an issue in my case, but um, certainly give it a shot. Uh, I'm using the OptiGlaze um, kit here. And the first thing I'm going to do is add some gray. So you'll see is when I dip my brush, first of all, I'm using a really fine brush. But as I dip my brush in that gray, I'm going to add it in, onto the tooth in two points. And then I'm just going to take the additional glaze and I'm going to work it uh, right along just below the incisal edge uh, to start adding some translucency. Uh, and you'll see as I go back and I start working on the other central, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to add those two points of um, stain kind of on the proximals just below the incisal edge. And I'm going to begin, begin to then work it um, throughout the rest of the tooth. And once I've added what I want to have onto that tooth, I'm going to really just wipe my brush off, get a clean brush, and then I'm just going to work on diffusing what stain I've already put on the tooth. We, we want this to be subtle. We don't want this to stand out and look artificial. So that's all I'm doing here is just kind of thinning it out and making it look a little bit more subtle maybe adding it um, a little bit more and dragging it down into the middle portion of the tooth kind of irregularly just to add some uh, of that translucency down towards the, the middle of that tooth. And then I'm gonna cure it with my curing light. And you can kind of appreciate what that looks like after step one uh, of, of stain. Step three of the process is going to be boosting that incisal translucency a little bit out on the line angles. Once again, working just below the incisal edge, adding it to kind of to the corners of the tooth. Um, and blue is really, really powerful. So you want to, you want this to be quite subtle when you see it on the tooth. And that's a really important thing because too much of this and it will look artificial um, so I'm just adding it a little bit on those corners and then dragging it once again to diffuse it and then curing with my curing light again. Just to tack that down before I add the next stain. The next thing I'm going to add is this ivory white. And this ivory white can be used to add a halo that is a little bit more noticeable. Uh, this is kind of a, I think, a... Um, you don't have to do this, um, but I'm only going to do it in one of these centrals just to show you what it looks like. But you can see all I'm doing is taking that ivory white and dragging it right along the very incisal edge of this, um, kind of right along the incisal edge and just down that distal and mesial incisal corners just a little bit. And then I'm going to cure that. So we'll see what that looks like at the very end. One of those teeth, I've added a halo, one I haven't. And then it's just a little chroma bump. Um, kind of in between the what would be the mammalons on this just to accentuate you, you if you study teeth you, you know that a lot oftentimes there's a little bit of brown or in this case I'm using this orangish pink color just to accentuate the mammalons and once again same technique add a little bit clean your brush and then use that clean brush just to diffuse it and make it a little bit more subtle and then we're going to cure so you may not be all that impressed with how this looks right now, but the, the next step is kind of where the magic comes and that's adding your material, in this case, Flexera, as a glaze over that surface. And that does two things. It gives you first a, a nice luster to that surface uh, if you do it correctly. And it also works to diffuse those stains a little bit. It almost acts like a little bit of a chromatic enamel just to diffuse those stains and make them a little bit more subtle. So you can see I'm adding this just very, very thin layer, and I'm going to add multiple layers uh, to this. But this first layer I'm adding 
And then it's really important that you use some sort of curing mechanism that is compatible with your material. So here I'm using the Blue Phase Power Cure. Uh, you can use a curing light if it is compatible with your material. I think it's just convenient for me, but you could also use your Auto Flash or whatever the cure unit is that comes with your 3D printer. Uh, then I'm going to add a really thin layer of Flexera again as a second coat. And you can see I'm using my glove to kind of mitigate how much I'm adding. I don't want to flood this surface. I don't want to change the shape of the tooth. I just want to add a little bit of gloss. And I did have some cotton that had somehow gotten on uh, this as I was working. And so you'll see I kind of pluck it off uh, here in a second. And yeah, you can see that there. So removing that, you'll see how that affects our final uh, in those final picture. But once again, just coming back to this, not all curing lights are compatible with these 3D printed uh, materials. Our composites that we work with every day in patient's mouse cure at a at a wavelength of about 450 nanometers. So most curing lights are optimized for that wavelength, but these materials that we're 3D printing are cure at much lower wavelengths. So it's important to have a curing light that is optimized for that purpose. You could also use, uh, in this case, your Otoflash to do the initial cure. Uh, but here is, is a very important step. I'm gonna submerge my restoration in glycerin uh, and I'm going to put that into my Oda Flash to do a final cure. So I have not touched that facial surface since I tack cured it with my curing light. It's going straight in the glycerin and straight in my Oda Flash for a thousand flashes. If you're using a different system, just follow the manufacturer's instructions for the material. I'm sure most of them have specific instructions for post curing these materials after staining and glazing. And as we take that out, we're gonna just bring it over to the sink. Uh, glycerin is water soluble, which makes it really easy to clean off. So all I'm gonna do is remove that from, uh, actually have a little lab case that I keep that glycerin in that makes it really easy to handle. And then I'm going to just rinse it off with some water, dry it with a paper towel, and we'll see what kind of result we get. It's a little hard to tell on my video camera, but we did get a really nice shine to those restorations. Here you can see it a little bit better. And here you can appreciate just how diffuse those stains look. It looks ends up looking really natural. You can also appreciate what that cotton did to the disto and sizal. Uh, I would obviously smooth that off if this were a real case. If you have any questions about this, feel free to DM me at smileprofessor on Instagram. Thanks for tuning in.